I'm glad you're here. Especially glad that I'm here. Um, <laughs> three years ago when we were uh, planning this, uh, I, I just hoped that I would still be around. And I'm, for a variety of reasons I won't go into, uh, that has happened. So we're here to talk about Holland's uh, views on uh, theory, research, and practice, at least from my vantage point. This, uh, this slide uh, shows uh, Holland's uh, photo when uh, he became an enlisted man, World War II. And this photo appeared on John Smart's office door. Smart was uh, uh, an educational psychologist, University of Memphis. And he kept this picture on his office door because he said he owed his career and all that he had been able to do to um, Holland's theory and the practical tools that he had created. That's one way we can look at the impact of theory, research, and practice. Checking my own uh, Vita, I find about 25 or 30 percent of it is also related to Holland's theory, research, and practice. When Holland would give a talk, he would usually start off by saying, I had a lot of trouble preparing this talk. And then he would attribute that to the conference organizers who were <laughs> not clear and so forth. <laughs> I, I had trouble too. Um, <clears throat> but my re, re, uh, course was to talk with uh, Gary Godfredson, because Godfredson has written a lot with Holland over the years. And uh, he said, well, um, have fun with it, uh, be blunt, and channel John. So I did six things uh, to try to channel John, and the last two were especially helpful. And you'll see reference to those uh, as I continue. There was one other thing uh, that I used, and that's the database, a bibliography that some folks here uh, created several years ago. And by the way, that has just been updated. And so at a poster session later today, you can talk to Emily Kennelly and Amanda Sargent, and they'll tell you about what's happened up through 2015 with this database. This quote from the 2004 unpublished autobiography by Holland, My Life with a Theory, uh, illustrates, I think, pretty clearly his views about theory, research, and practice. One of the things that uh, I'm aware of is that um, Holland, uh, the, the essence of it for him was the elements of the theory. And he told me a story once on a phone, on a little phone chat. He said, uh, we were trying to develop uh, uh, items for the self-directed search, and we had a, a whole array of items in the realistic area that had similar numbers on the SDS. And so he said, I had uh, Amy Powell at PAR read the items to me aloud, and uh, I listened very carefully, and I decided which item best captured the realistic area and should be included in the SDS. It wasn't just the numbers, but it was the theory that was important. He also told me in that little conversation, which I remember, is don't ever tell anyone I told you this. <laughs> so just ignore the fact that I did that. Um, so we were asked to talk about uh, challenges and opportunities, as Bob Lint said, and I, uh, for today, I'm going to talk about four of those. Um, the paper has the others. So one of the things about the theory is that it's not protected, as you know. Uh, anybody can use RIASEC theory. That's a challenge, too, because not all of the results of the use of the theory 
provide the same kinds of findings. That's a challenge. Uh, on the other hand, the theory is known worldwide. Uh, it has been, uh, well, it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. We've already seen it in Bob Lint's presentation, for example. Um, at the same time, uh, the instruments that Holland uh, created, they are protected. And as Bob mentioned, uh, that can uh, stymie or at least handicap uh, research related to uh, the theory. They're protected by trademark and by copyright. And you can be sued uh, if you violate those. That's, that's a challenge. At the same time, uh, these instruments have been standardized for use in counseling and professional practice. These instruments are supported by the publisher even today. And the publisher does provide grants uh, if you are persistent. Uh, and they'll provide discounts and other kinds of things. And that's an opportunity. Uh, that's an opportunity for us um, to do work uh, in this area. As you know, there were many critics of the SDS and of Holland's work uh, along the way, uh, even today. Jack Kreitz was especially critical of the first edition of the SDS, as you can see on the screen. In the 2004 uh, autobiography, Holland mentions uh, a presentation that he made at APA, one of the first about the self-directed search. And uh, he thought it went pretty well, so he was talking with an editor of a journal after the presentation, and he said, do you think you might be interested in publishing something about this? And the editor replied, it's just another gimmick, and declined. There are opportunities uh, that come from this. Uh, Holland responded to these uh, challenges in a lot of different uh, ways. Um, some of them were kind of fun. For example, in the 94 SDS manual, he has 39 gotcha questions that people had challenged him with over the years, and, and then he answered those. These were anonymous people, of course. Um, but he also took it as an opportunity to uh, do research. Uh, he told me once that uh, every time he ran into somebody who tried to copy the self-directed search, he redoubled his efforts to try to make it a better instrument so that they would never catch up. There's another challenge that we've got. Uh, I looked uh, years ago at the conference programs at APA and ACA, there wasn't a single reference to Holland's work uh, in any of those conference programs. Even at the National Career Development Association meeting, only 1.5%, which was like three, I think, of the programs uh, at that meeting made any reference to Holland or his work. That's clearly a challenge that we face. What to do about it? Well, there are opportunities. Uh, conference program committees could maybe specify the integration of theory, research, and practice uh, when they're reviewing program proposals. As I mentioned, uh, publishers could probably help a little with uh, some travel grants and some other kinds of support. But mostly it's a challenge for us uh, to redouble our efforts to report uh, work with Holland's theory uh, in the meetings that we attend. So the conference organizers also ask us to make some recommendations for the future, and I identified six. Talk about four of them here. This quote, I think, is, uh, is pretty good. Something that Holland said uh, years ago, cost of writing a theory that is a literary venture is minimal. As I go to conference meetings, 
As I read professional journal articles, I see evidence of this. So one of the recommendations that I would make is that we renew our efforts to make sure that research and practice are also included in the presentations we make and in the articles uh, that we write. Holland left us with a lot of different tools uh, to do this kind of work. Of course, these are copyrighted, trademarked, and they're available from the publisher who owns these. Happily, uh, most of these are now being revised. This is currently underway. Self-directed search form E, which was produced initially with the first version, form R of the SDS, is being revised. As Jim mentioned, one of the things that we talk a lot about is social justice. Uh, this version of the SDS would probably help us uh, in that regard. If you haven't looked at it lately, uh, it might be worth a look. These two, uh, we haven't said anything about it yet, uh, the environmental a aspect of the theory. Position classification inventory is a widely underutilized tool that would help us learn more about organizations, jobs, the ways things are changing in the economy. The environmental identity scale, John Smart used it quite a bit in studying educational environments, over 20 articles. Um, we used it in one uh, article. It would tell us an awful lot about the environmental uh, part of the theory. So what happens when the theorist dies? Uh, what happens to the intellectual, the theoretical estate that's left behind? Does it just go away? Identified four things that I think um, uh, say something about this. And this first one is important. Bruce and Jane Walsh um, established a fund uh, through APA. That fund now has over uh, half million dollars in the endowment. If you want to know a little bit more about it, you can check with Ryan Duffy. Um, he was involved with a proposal that was funded, the first one that was funded by uh, this endowment. PAR will help. Uh, we've got this database that's now been updated. Tells us a lot about this theoretical estate. And interestingly enough, the trend line for that database is up. Holland died in 2008, work goes on. And lastly, I just mentioned these archives, the University of Missouri, um, 53 boxes of materials that came from Holland's house, all kinds of things in that archive. Janet Lentz and I spent uh, a couple of days, we got through seven boxes. There are also about 20 some odd uh, audiovisual materials in that collection. It's an awful lot we can learn about theory, research, and practice, the life of a renowned theorist, researcher, and practitioner in that collection. And hopefully, State Historical Society of Missouri will update that very soon. So finally, last thing to say, um, Holland spoke here in 1968. Walked down the walkway out there. Uh, that's where he uh, held forth. That was hugely uh, impactful on me because um, as I listened to what he was saying, I realized that it was absolutely the antithesis of what we were doing in our counseling center at the time. Absolutely the antithesis. And I thought, oh boy. Well. If I had known at age, about age 25, what I know now, I would have realized that I could actually latch on to this theory, its research and its practice, 
and I could follow the path that Holland uh, laid out, and I could build a career. And if I did that, it would be a successful career. It would one, be one that involved colleagueship, friendships, and the opportunity to help people worldwide with career problems and career decisions. So my recommendation would be that you also uh, join uh, this path. And I wish you well uh, in your own pursuit of Holland's theory and its practice and research. Thank you.